Hi everyone, welcome to another Astronomy with Claire. So, um, as you can see, it is, it's about quarter to midnight and the telescope is already outside. Um, it's been set up for a little while. I've been doing some plate solving to find out where I am, um, pointing at, etc., and things like that. As you can see, I've already been doing some imaging so this is the, I can't remember which one it is. This is um, the Pinwheel Galaxy. This is M101. It's a single uh, frame of 120 seconds, two minutes long. So this idea whereby we stack images one on top of the other, the longer the exposure, the more detail you get. And you see, we've got quite a bit of detail um, in the pinwheel. So here's one from not what I did earlier, but no, here's one that Hubble did earlier. So here we go. So a bit of a comparison, obviously multi-billion dollar space telescope, um, you know, in comparison, but this is a single frame, single shot of 120 seconds. Um, and again, the longer the exposure, the more detail you get. And, the, and again, this, the Hubble would have taken many, many, many images of which are then put together uh, with calibration files etc so as you can see mine's rotated a bit more round I think this bit up here is this detail here um, what have we got we've got the core here so this is obviously the bright core in the center um, so yeah so this image is well the, in fact this bit here may be this bit I'm not entirely sure it doesn't really matter which way around it's rotated but in the end of the day you know this image is coming along I've already um, got some data for the pinwheel already um, and I've just been adding more data to it whilst I waited for something else now this something else has uh, turned up over the horizon and is on its way so in fact there's a couple of things so let's look at Stellarium and let's just check everything so Nina's running, the camera's running, everything like that. Solarium's running. Now what I want to do is turn the Stellarium round and look towards the south. And towards the south, I'm hoping Saturn is available. Now Saturn and Jupiter are rising up from the southeast as you can see at this time of year they start to become more and more prominent in the sky as we catch up with them um, as we go around the solar system so Saturn and Jupiter or Jupiter and Saturn are a lot further out in the solar system and they're going around the Sun as well but they take a lot longer whereas obviously we take one year um, Saturn I think it's 29 years um, I'll have to double check that um, so you can imagine a bit like runners on running around, uh, uh, you know, on a on a track. Um, we're constantly going around once a year, whereas Saturn is moving a lot slower. So we catch up with it. So eventually we leave it behind and then eventually we catch up with it again. Um, so at certain times of the year, Jupiter and Saturn become brighter in the sky and they should be fairly bright right now. So if I click on Saturn because Saturn is the one that's higher above the fence line so click current object and fingers crossed the telescope will slew to Saturn so let's check our guiding software so that's just basically showing you which way the telescope's pointing um, Fingers crossed, you see the marker should come down and point at point at Saturn. Where is it? There it is. Here it comes. So the telescope's making its way down to Saturn. There we go. It's pointing in the southeasterly direction. Fingers crossed, we get we get something now. Um, when doing planetary and the moon and bright objects, it's better to use another piece of software called 
sharp cap. What sharp cap does, so with Nina, Nina's taking long exposure images for us. So, um, you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 seconds. With planets and the moon, they're a lot brighter. If we try to image for 60 seconds with Jupiter, for example, all we're gonna get is a very bright object that's completely blown out of detail and we wouldn't be able to see anything. Everything switches on. And we've got something already on the screen. So, which is pretty cool. Um, always makes me smile when I see this. So, let's try enhancing it. So, there you go. We can see there is a bright egg-shaped object. The egg shape is important. You notice any other dots or anything like that are always round, stars and things like that. Saturn's egg shaped because of its rings. And there we go. The Saturn sitting on our screen. Now it's fairly small and there's a reason for that. It's because how far away it is. Saturn is, now this is mind boggling when you think, think about it. This is a live image. This is this is not a photograph, this is not a video clip or anything like that. That is now, that light is coming from Saturn now. Um, you can see the planet, you can see the rings here, you can even see the gap between the rings, these dark areas. The image that you're seeing now, that planet, is 1.34 billion kilometers away in miles 746 million miles away that planet is that far away and that's the reason why it's that small it is so far away but luckily it's very bright it's got a lovely shiny surface um, so let me see I can just drag this over there we go it's got this lovely um, shiny surface, uh, creamy coloured, as you can see, you see it's a creamy coloured, the, um, the rings are much wider than the Earth, they're, they're wider than the, than the planet. Um, and this is some great facts we can get from this. So Saturn rings are 175,000 miles or 282,000 kilometres across from edge to edge. But they're only about 100 meters thick. It's about 30, what's that? No, um, I think it's about 30 feet, which is about 10 meters thick, because this is made up of tiny chunks and boulders about as, as big as a house. Some of them are small like pebbles and things like that. But they're so highly reflective, we can see them a billion kilometers away. Now you can see the wobbling so this is atmospheric distortion of the Earth's own atmosphere that's causing this. So the atmosphere, as you know, there's wind outside and air is constantly moving. So what this is doing is the light is passing through our atmosphere and our atmosphere is moving at high altitude um, and it causes the air molecules to wobble and it gives this distinctive wobbling effect. So this is the reason why stars twinkle um, and uh, planets are fairly bright so you don't notice that as much as you do with um, uh, stars but you definitely notice it here um, when it's you know a lot closer we can start capturing and I'm going to capture yeah, two and a half thousand frames so there it goes. So at the bottom down here, you can see that it's capturing uh, these frames. So it's doing basically six frames a second. So every second it catch captures six frames and I've told it to capture two and a half thousand. Maybe a bit too much. I don't know. I haven't done planetary in a little while. Um, 
but you can see it's just basically recording all this data. So on the hard drive, it will record all of these images of Saturn, um, and then we will use software to then find all the best frames. So as you can see, what's happening is the, the wobbly atmosphere makes some of the frames doesn't look so good and other frames are a lot sharper. So software will analyze all of the frames and get rid of all of the rubbish ones and keep all of the, um, the good ones essentially and then put them all together and then we can sharpen the image so that it looks a lot better than it does now. Hoping that Jupiter is available. So we select current target and soon it's on it's right next to it so fingers crossed we're gonna see Jupiter come up now Jupiter is a lot closer to the earth so it should and it's an enormous planet so it is huge it's bigger than all the other um, planets on this all this whole solar system put together um, so let's see what we get And hopefully we get something. So stretch this. There we go. We've got something up there. So we can move the telescope while we're here. And I think there we go. So it's a bit bright at the minute, so we've got to make some setting changes. That's the planet Jupiter. So um, it's not much at the minute, simply because this is a raw image coming directly from Jupiter. So sunlight has gone all the way from the sun, bounced off Jupiter, it's come all the way back to us, and we are now looking at it through the telescope's um, imaging camera. You can see across here there is a band. So Let's have a look at, bring this over here. That is the planet there. So here's Jupiter and the bands that are going across are all these cloud belts. So this was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. So obviously it's in a lot better detail, but you can see this is, there's a, it's a round planet. Um, and there is some detail, so let me see if I can... Definitely we can see there is a band going across the planet, which is amazing. It's um, so... It's the... Got to be... It depends which way, way up this image is. Um, but more than likely, it's the southern equatorial belts. This one, there's two major ones, this one and this one. Um, and the southern equatorial belt is where the, uh, re, um, the Great Red Spot is. And the Great Red Spot is an enormous hurricane. It's been going at least 600 years uh, when it was first spotted by Galileo. Um, so, yeah, so obviously you can see there's more wobbling and atmospheric distortion as well. Um, the amazing thing about Jupiter is that even though um, even though it is uh, it is as, as bigger than all the other planets put together it's it's just huge um, the great red spot itself is between two to three times bigger than the earth um, so the earth is is very small compared to the planet uh, it's also very reflective because of the clouds so the sunlight hits it and it bounces back off again um, but it spins extremely quickly so for every 10 hours Jupiter there's one in one day one day and on Jupiter is 10 hours long so we go around every 24 hours Jupiter goes around once every 10 so by the time we've done 24, Jupiter's done two and a bit rotations, which is incredibly fast um, for something so big. So let me see, um, just so that we start seeing more detail. 
So there's more details starting to come out. So you can definitely see this this band going across. Um, so what I'm going to do is take a capture of that um, quick capture of a thousand frames. So we're now recording a thousand frames of Jupiter. Um, again, it will do, go through the same process. It will just capture um, raw content and then later we will process that into a final image and a lot more detail comes out. Same with all the other images that we've taken that doesn't look so much at first, but then afterwards, um, it, when it's all been processed, it looks a lot better. Okay, so that's complete. So I've recorded all those uh, frames. Um, what, I can, what I have done is I've, I've decreased the visual area that the, the imaging camera is looking at. The reason is I want to show you something else. So at the minute, the, the planet is overexposed, but I can do um, a stretch of the histogram. And what that does, increases what we can see from the picture and you'll see two dots. So these are what Galileo spotted when he first started looking at the, the, um, the planet with his early telescope and then he noticed some other dots. Some dots there and is there any more? Let's try a slightly bigger image. And zoom out a bit. Zoom right out. Okay. So he spotted these dots and he noticed that night after night they changed. Jupiter itself would move across the sky but Using his telescope, he noticed these dots were moving around. And he didn't couldn't figure out why. And then eventually it clicked. That these are moons of Jupiter. So if we look here, we will see the four main Galilean moons in um, Stellarium. So there's Jupiter, closest is Io, then Europa, Callisto and Ganymede. So they are called the Galilean moons because they are the ones that he spotted and each night he noticed they moved in different positions because essentially they're going around Jupiter like our moon goes around the Earth and each night they were changing position. So if we move, look back here at Sharp Cap, we can see there's a moon there, there's one there, and there's one here. Now, depending on the orientation of the camera, I can't quite tell if that's the closer one. So, look back. It's either Io, there's, there's three on one side and one on another. So, we've got Io, Europa, and Callisto. And then we've got Ganymede, which is the larger of the four. So we've got there's two here. So this is possibly Io, and then which one? Io and Europa. So Io is the most volcanically active um, moon in the solar system. It is basically one moon covered in volcanoes. Um, this one is Europa. Now Europa is a very different, whereas one moon is um, is basically covered in fire uh, and uh, lava and volcanoes. Europa is essentially covered in ice. It's all cracked, and um, because of the huge gravitational pull of Jupiter constantly flexes the surface. It's the same with the reason why that Io is covered in. Uh, volcanoes is because it's con that all of the moons have constantly been pulled um, and 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 you know it's, it's like, like a squeezing a, a sponge um, 
so the gravitational pull of Jupiter is enormous and it's constantly flexing these moons and it causes these um, these cracks these enormous cracks on the surface uh, that you can see here so that's this moon here and again this is all live this is as they are now and if we waited long enough these these moons will move position they will you know go around Jupiter or behind the back or across the front um, and this one up here is um, that one's got to be Ganymede so my spelling is probably poor so that looks more of like a, what we'd think of as a traditional moon um, covered in craters and things like that so there you go so the two main gas giants in the in our uh, two biggest gas giants in our solar system so uh, Jupiter and Saturn and again so it doesn't look fantastic right now but it will look a lot better when it's all being processed okay so um, I think that's enough for now um, next time um, if you yeah, give a look out on the Instagram channel and the new Facebook channel um, and on Twitter as well for I'll put these pictures up and um, if you like what you're seeing or to like the video uh, share and uh, subscribe if you haven't done already if you have thank you so much um, and yeah it will just keep you in regular contact um, as to the next time I put up uh, another video so until next time it's bye for now um, hi again um, slightly surprised myself so this is a little bit of extra add-on to the, the video that's Jupiter um, so the device that I said I've I got is it basically extends the focal length of the telescope and the long, the the better the longer the focal length the, the 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 further you can see and for the planets that's great for 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 big objects like galaxies and things like that no you you need a wide angle so you, lesser focal length is better but for planets which are relatively small against the the wider universe um the longer the focal length the better i did not expect this to work so um i hope i'm all plugged in and everything i'm a little excited um uh so basically i put the the five times barlow so I thought, you know, I would get one and see what happens. I've used two times before and I've used three times before, but never a five times. And and you can see Jupiter is is there. It's it's a round ball. There is multiple cloud patterns, etc., going across. Um, I've been trying to focus it, uh, and this is a raw image. This is um this this is um, you know not recording or anything like that so without any sort of um a sharpening or, or or anything but you can see so if i do a stretch on it i wonder if you'll be able to see any of the moons yet yeah, there's that i think that is io there so you can see io is is right next to jupiter um so Let's take that off. Um, there's Jupiter. Oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Um, I'm 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 completely blown away. Um, that's just so brilliant. Um, I'm gonna have to start recording that. So uh, let's just. So it's. Oh my god. I can't believe how amazing that looks and it's fairly low on the horizon so the the atmospheric dispersion effect is uh, you know, the, the basically the wobbling of the atmosphere um, is quite bad the lower the planet is to the to the oh my gosh the lower the planet is 
to um, to the lower the planet is to the to the to the horizon the worse this effect is but this is a complete test this is just um, oh my gosh so what we are seeing is is that um, that that there could well be the great red spot um, so that's you know that area there on the equatorial belt um, it doesn't matter which way up this is recorded because I can just after it's been processed you know rotate it round um, so it looks like yeah, you can see the white areas up here um, you can see I think this area is it could be the other way it's quite hard to tell um, this area here could be this area I'm not sure um, that's exciting I oh, wow I am so excited um, I cannot wait to process this I'm gonna process straight away it's like nearly one in the morning but uh, I'm I, I can't even wait to see what Saturn looks like um, but Saturn's gone behind some trees so um, this is enough for now I'm gonna process this and just see what happens um, yeah very excited <laughs> That's enough for now. <laughs>